I mean, we need certain guns. So the guns we need are pump shotgun, 12 gauge pump shotgun, or automatic shotgun. Nothing else. Don't, nothing else. If you, if you feel like you'd like to give us something and it's not on the list, save it. We've got to have these precise ones because this is what they use against us. And as a weapons expert from the Army, I know what will be best. The next thing we need are 357 Magnum revolvers. That's the main weapon. Not 38. 38 will bounce off of windows. They've been known to. 357. 45 automatic are the best. That's what I personally carry. The next thing we need, if you don't have them, Tom Collins knows where you can get them for half price and, and we need them, are Colt AR-15. That's the civilian name for the M16 rifle. That's what they hit us with most of the time. Or the Mini-14. It's all right. It's not great. We need these weapons very badly. And if you have never been in a firefight, I have stood on a farm in Ohio that was a retreat, and for four solid hours, you never did find out why the police didn't come out, there were over 6,000 rounds expired from both sides trying to kill people. That was one firefight. This is no game, and this is no joke. I spent Monday in the hospital because I wasn't careful at a job that I was having, and somehow, somebody, I got the blood test to prove it, slipped poison in the pop that I was drinking, and I was in critical condition. And I've uh, still got the scar from the IV. I went into convulsions and seizures, and uh, a lot of people prayed. And Monday morning, I walked out of that hospital. I looked sick for a few days, but I walked out of that hospital because I got careless. It was a new way they had tried, and I wasn't ready for it. From now on, we're going to watch all the way. So please, this is an unusual request, but if you have them, we need them, okay? And the other thing we need, we need material so that clothes can be made. We need uh, concrete block, we need cement, we need hundreds of two-by-fours, okay? We need bob wire fencing, we need fence posts, we need electrical wire, and you can imagine anything in construction. We need lots of sheetrock. So anything that you can, you feel that you write, if you're in a construction field, you have nails, you can imagine how many nails we need. We need this stuff, okay? We need farm tools like shovels, picks, and so on. We need everything under the sun. It is a retreat that is a ranch. We need farm animals. If you've got a horse and the Lord might lead you to donate the horse, we need horses more than we need anything else. Okay? And that's pretty well it. You can just pray about it and see how the Lord will lead you. If you feel like you don't need any money, bring it to the pasture. Okay? The land is there. All we've got to do is get the things built. And I know people around here like Sean and others will be glad on weekends to come up and hang sheet rock with the rest of us. <laughs> I won't be here, I'm sorry to say, so I'm trusting others. Johnny, I think okay, one more thing very quickly for our Sunday school records. For all those people who are not here during first session, please uh, raise your hands. Or if you were not counted in the first, in your second session class already, if you are not in first session or not counted in your second session class, please raise your hand. If you're a visitor who is here, and you're not in the first session. If you're first session, raise your hand. If you're not counted in your second session, session and Mike, you get those laid on those sides. Keep your hands up, Johnny. Go ahead and talk. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask questions, but I don't think I can ask questions with everybody's hands in the air. So I'll, I'll add very quickly here. We have tried retreats several times. They've always failed because we allowed the supporting churches to have a voice in the retreat itself. Now, I love this church, and I'm a member of it, or I wouldn't, I've never joined the church in the five years I've been saved. That's what I think of this church. I think of this pastor. But the retreat, the workers, if you think that you would like to be a worker at the retreat, just remember, <laughs> it's going to be on the hip the whole time you're there. Tom Collins, I told him and his wife, um, they were out looking at the land with us. And uh, this Cole already knows who gave us the land. Tom gave us the land. And uh, I told him and his wife, I said, you know, when you come out here, this is your land. But the moment you come through the gates, you put it on your hip. And so pray for us. Pray while we're eat. We're claiming souls upon souls. I'm going to be talking with the people who train me in witchcraft. I'm going to be going in to the top people that sit on the council, the 13 people that sit on the council. I will be in space for eight of them live, and I expect them to attend the meeting. Okay? Pray for us. We're going to believe miracles are going to be done. Baltimore is the closest I'm going to get to Jimmy Carter, but uh, you know, for those that haven't heard, Jimmy, the great evangelistic center, sister, won Larry Flint to the Lord, but she told Larry that she keep on publishing Hustler. He just had to add new men pictures along with the women to balance it out. That was the Christian principle. I wonder what Lord she's serving. Any questions? Yeah. Go ahead. Tell, he's going to repeat it for the tape. The question is, what about Charles Manson? Was he demon-possessed? Also about the book and everything. All right. Manson belonged to, uh, I had to belong to many brotherhoods, okay? 
Manson, the brotherhood that he belonged to, is called the Process. It's the only brotherhood I worry about. They are so radical that in order to kill me, they would gladly give their own life up right in a meeting. They will run out of England for human sacrifice. They have the inner and the outer process. The outer process is a good group. They have free coffee houses, free clothing, free priests to live, and so on. The inner practice human sacrifice. They teach four god systems. Yahweh as the evil god, Lucifer as the good god, Jesus as one being punished because he spoke against Satan, and Satan as the earthly god. And uh, they wear a cross, a big silver cross, with a serpent engraved on the cross, showing that Satan and Christ are one through the cross. They were rolled up. They were a contract. He was paid to do it. Kate was breaking away. Her husband knew about it. Her husband went over to establish an alibi in Europe. The money came down. $50,000 came down from Toronto to New Orleans, and poor Manson only got 2000 of it by the time it went through all the sticky fingers. But that's what the Tate killings were about. The others just happened to be there. She wanted out, and you don't get out unless you come through Christ. And she didn't think about trying out. And her mistake was she warned him in advance. She was arguing with her. She was having a baby, and she didn't want the baby raised up in it, and she wanted out. And if you remember the trial script from the book, that's the one thing she begged. She said, not, you know, she kept repeating over and over, don't kill me, don't kill my baby. Her baby was what she cared about. And that's the information that I have on it. I belong to the New Orleans branch, and he was called a field disciple or an evangelist from the New Orleans branch. The process. They were the people who first tried to kill me. The first incident that ever happened happened from them. They're very, very radical. They're located in, they've got a few scattered uh, undercover groups in L.A., but they've got an open chapter in Frisco. Any other questions? Yes. Are, are epileptics demon-possessed? I'm glad you asked that. When I was saved, and I've got the veteran records to prove it, I was an epileptic or a wounded knob. I took an EEG this time last year. The brain scan shows I'm still an epileptic. The first thing that the people called out of me, and they did not know I was an epileptic, I was taking the dial and the peanut barb in secret, they called a demon of epilepsy out of me. I have never had a seizure, an epileptic seizure, since then, except when the VA got a court order about a year and a half ago because they were concerned for me and made me take the medicine, and I went into seizure, and they gave it up. I've never had a seizure, and nobody that I've ever called a demon of epilepsy out of has ever had a seizure since, as long as they take off the medicine. They're not possessed. I want to add this real quick. Because of the King James Bible, many places in the New Testament, all demonic activity is called possession. If you'll get yourself a Greek lexicon, You'll, and I think Pastor can verify with me, only two cases in the New Testament use the word that applies to possession. The 16th chapter of Acts and legions. The others apply to activity, demonic activity in their life. All right? Now, give you an instance. We prayed for a girl when I was here last time. Who was the people? You were upstairs with me, weren't you? Who was the other woman upstairs with us? Is she here? She can testify. The girl could not pray the prayer of salvation until we called certain demons out of her. When we were done praying the prayer of salvation, then we called more out of her. But certain ones had to go before she could even pray, but they had not all gone. If that's a little contrary to you, it's because when you give your heart to the Lord, you give your heart to the Lord. The flesh can still be occupied if you gave them permission to come in your life through different things. Epilepsy, there's no argument about it. That's how Jesus delivered it. And all the dynamics involved in the world will just feed the demon. I've seen hundreds. I feel for epileptics because I went through years of epilepsy, and I know the feeling, the embarrassment of the seizure and everything, and I've never had, my brain waves show I'm still an epileptic. I guess if somebody had cancer and had, the Lord had did a miraculous thing and they still saw the cancer in the scope, but they weren't dying, I don't know, but I have the brain wave test and the brain scans both show I'm still an epileptic, but I don't have a seizure and I don't take the medicine. I really feel that the injury that was done to me was physical, but the demon causes the convulsion, okay? That's my own experience as an epileptic, yes. I can only give you the names of the, the question. Okay. Who are the names of the other people on the Council 13? Okay. I can only give you the ones that were on it, plus the girl who replaced me. There has been much assassination. There is a war going on in the occult right now between the traditionalists and the modernists. It's funny. We just argue about between traditionalists and modernists there. But the traditionalists and the modernists there, this is why I keep getting invitations to come back and join because I was one of the traditionalist leaders, and they thought that I got out because the traditionalist was losing or something. They didn't start losing until I left. But this is why they went for his son in. He is the leader of the tradition. But the, the leader of the Grand Council, as it stands <laughs> about a week ago, is Gavin Frost. He's the leader of the modern, the evangelical of the group, the ones who say everybody can be a witch. Uh, on it, the girl who took my place is Yvonne Collin, or Legina is her name. Now, many names I'll give you are witch names, okay, because I don't know their real names. 
That's the law in Wichita. They don't choose to tell you. You can't ask. And even the council don't know the other council members' correct names from it. Jesse Bell, who lives in Florida, is named Lady Sheba. Civil League, Dr. Raymond Buckland, who used to lead it, Lorca, is uh, still on the council. Uh, Louise Hubner from Los Angeles is on the council. Uh, Zorla from Chicago is on the council. I think the others that were on it at the time are off. Uh, Mrs. Morgan from New York uh, and uh, Lavina from France are still on the council. The others, I think, have either been killed or resigned or what, and others have been placed in their place. Yeah. The traditionalists believe... Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Just to clarify the distinction between the traditional and the modern. The traditionalist witch believes you must be a hereditary witch. Okay? That means you must be born into a family just before. A hereditary line. The modernists want everybody, particularly the Christians, most of all, to be witches, okay? Question, can you tell us about UFOs? Now, and my sister's connection, they, there's a story go, uh, that, that Jack Chick had told each person three years ago that I had told him. My sister, before my wife came around, used to be leader of the state of Ohio, the high priestess there, of the whole state. And her little pastime was calling up, supposedly filling the sky with UFOs and watching everybody's excitement. And some of the most outstanding sightings were in the early 70s in Ohio. And she used to laugh about it because she'd be standing in a circle out in the field somewhere calling up demons. And that's all they were, were angels of light playing games in the sky. Remember, a demon, get the little spooky picture. There are a fallen angel, an unclean spirit. They can assume any form or go into anything except a Christian who walks in the spirit all the time. Know any? You know, or in other words, a Christian who keeps it under the blood and so on. But they can, they can assume forms, including spacemen or solid objects like flying saucers or so on. That's why when they appear on the radar scope and a jet gets up there, they vanish right in front of the palace eye because they're nothing but a spirit. Tom Rose, and you're saying the words possession, obsession, and affliction, and that's how it relates to a Christian. Well, let's, let's trade the words around a little. Possession, obsession, no, possession, oppression, obsession, and depression, okay? Let's use those instead of the affliction, okay? Possession means absolutely total ownership. You've seen one of the few, I've seen four or five cases in my whole life of possession, and the young lady that we prayed for at the end of the service was one of those that was possessed. I, that's how many in five years, and I have set in or been part of close to a thousand deliverances. You don't see very many cases of possession. Possession means that person doesn't breathe, eat, talk, say anything that the devil does not allow them to do that's inside of them. Maybe you've seen them if you tried to get somebody to pray and they've actually wanted to pray the prayer of salvation, but they can't get it out. That's possession. Son of Sam, possession. Uh, John Todd, five years ago, possession. Um, Charles Manson, possession. Let me explain. You notice Legion was possessed. The girl in the 16th chapter was possessed. You notice what they did? They wanted help. You know what they did? They went and they challenged God. The most they could do was fall down before him and get the minister's attention. I'd been in meetings where they couldn't ask for deliverance because the, the spirit wouldn't let them. But they could create a commotion by resisting the devil. What they would do is they'd start thinking they wanted free, and the devil would start manifesting, and that would draw the attention of the minister to them. But most of the possessed people are possessed, not so much because the demons are possessing them, but they're possessing the demons. I mean... Most of the cases I meet as demonic activity do not want to give up the spirit. Remember how much you fought to give up particular spirits in your life. You just did not want to give. She did not want to turn them loose because she liked them. That may seem unusual to you, but it goes on. Think of the man who likes chasing women. He doesn't want to give up the demon of lust because he doesn't want to give up chasing the women. Okay? Now, oppression, possession is impossible for a Christian. Don't let anybody ever tell you that a Christian is possessed. That's an absolute lie of the devil. The next step is oppression. That is where the Christian can come. Oppression, uh, possession resides in the spirit or the heart of man. Oppression resides in the soul or the mind of man. Obsession resides in the flesh or the body of man. Okay? That would be the best way. Depression is outside. It's tormenting spirit from the outside. Unless it's a demon of depression. And then it's inside. But usually depression can be just you not depending enough upon the Lord so you're allowing the devil to depress you. I'm very funny. I don't allow any in-between. I'm not a fence straddler. It's either God or it's the devil. There isn't any in-between. And that's the Lord's own words. You're either with him or you're against him. Okay? That's the definition of them. Would you use an example of how witchcraft and occultism are used in advertising? Uh, yeah. The Inquirer. <laughs> uh, I get Pentecostals and Charismatics upset because I call Catherine Kuhlman a witch. They want proof. 
The inquirer, anybody who an article is done on faith healing or supernatural power in the inquirer must appear in person before the council of the Grand Druid. How many know about Kuhlman's article several years ago in the inquirer? You don't get in there without top approval from the board. All right? That settles it right there. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know how, that's how you feel. Next, uh, you've got symbol. Okay? Without going in for a long sermon on symbols, which is and Masons identify their ownership of things to the others by their symbol. How many go in? Masons <laughs> must do each eight things to perfect themselves. It's 6,000 years old. Two of them, one is drugs, one is alcohol, and one is immoral sex. That's three right there. All right? Without even going on any further. That's one symbol. The symbols all over the thing. The holy year to the Illuminati is the birth date, May 1st, 1976. 76. Anybody recognize that on a sign somewhere? Another beautiful one is Montgomery Ward and Mobile are one company. Mobile belongs to a company that owns Standard Oil, Exxon, and all of them. It's one of the, it's probably 40% of the money that comes to the Illuminati comes to that system of company. So naturally those are going to be built up and protected more than others. And what can I tell you? I met a, a PR man recently who told me he is the public relations man for the new Star Wars sequel. He's a homosexual. He told me there's not one star that's a major star in the new movie that has not gone to bed with homosexuals in order to get the part. He also said the majority of them are being kicked from the top occult soap opera in the country. Does anybody have an idea of what that soap opera is? Young and Restless. Reason, Brad, for those that watch it, is a Christian who counsels through astrology. And one of the new stars is Snapper, the doctor on the show that will be in Star Wars. And the guy told me that instead of 45% of the Star Wars thing being on the Force, 99% will be about the Force. And for the guys who like country western music and think they're safe because uh, it's not rock, Tom T. Hall has just brought out the best-selling song in a long time. It's called The Force, about good witchcraft battling bad witchcraft. I think it's good enough. Uh, Bob Melvin? The question is about acupuncture. Yeah. Acupuncture is part of a monk system that also developed Kung Fu and other things out of China. Okay. I'll classify it along with Laetrile. There is absolutely no scientific evidence that Laetrile heals, but it heals. When the people, a new study came out that had been healed by cancer, or cancer through Laetrile, were tested for psychic powers, they all rated in the 75% range, which is excellent. In other words, their faith in the drug and since God's not using the drug to heal them, their faith in this healing power is healing them. Now, who's healing them? Right, the devil. If you didn't know the devil could heal, I'm sorry, he can't. He'll just end up giving you something worse along the line. But that is what's healing. And it's sweeping through the chiropractic system, especially. A lot of them are using Laetrile. And there's no medical thing to heal you. It's pure psychic energy. And if you were here this morning, you know what psychic energy is. Is there a connection between chiropractor and the coat? Not that I know of except the Mormons are now really infiltrating the chiropractic system with the herb healing. Hank, is there any occult involvement in the hills today? Within five square mile area of where I live is where they're dumping all the bodies. But we shouldn't are living in the same area. I don't know. I can't get any information. I can't get any information at all, so I don't know. You know, they're holding things back. I doubt it, but I will tell you what is involved. The same spirit that was in the Sun of Sam. Okay? The same spirit that was in the trash bag killer who said he killed 34 young boys after raping them so he could become the top mass murderer in the world and break the record in Houston. These are demons that are going to come in in the next year. You think this is something. Where do you pick up the newspaper every day and this new killer is struck? You're going to have killers all over the place that are trying to break each other's records. Because you've got demons all over the top place trying to break each other's records. Okay? That's the best I can answer you. I don't know if it's a cult. It may be. But since there's no report of blood loss, I doubt it. Tony? Reflexology and acupuncture? I have no idea. Jim? You mean the fake energy crisis? I'll, I'll repeat that. Excuse me, I'll repeat that. He said last time I was here, I mentioned the, the uh, schedule that the Council of the Rothschilds had for domination of the world that would be fulfilled within 11 years of 1972. And uh, he asked me if the fake, can I add that word? Fake energy crisis had anything to do with it. What do you think started it? That's what's going to cause World War III. You've got to get out of the system of thinking this guy over here is a bad guy and this guy over here is a good guy. You can't do that. It's not a football game. You can't pick the Rams over the Vikings. You can't pick America over Russia. You can't pick the Dodd over Begin. You can't do it. You've got to look to the guy who's pulling the strings. His name is Rothschild. Okay? Remember now, 
the doc being called the man of peace right now. But who wrote him letters asking him to go to Israel? Jimmy Carter. Who set the whole thing up? Jimmy Carter. Don't lose sight of it. He's been losing popularity. He's never had any popularity with me. They say he's losing popularity with the conservative Christians. That's because the ones who voted for him just because he was a Christian have now learned he's not a Christian. I heard a speech. How many heard his press conference in Hungary? You really should buy a short wave set. I mean it. I really recommend it in my meeting. Um, a Baptist over in Hungary got up that wrote for the Baptist press over there. I don't know what type of Baptist he was. But he got up and he praised Carter for being a Christian and uplifting the Christian standards in America. I don't know what paper he's reading. And would he please get the Catholics off their back in Hungary? He told them, sorry, government and religion don't mix. Why don't he practice it here? No. Uh, he's going to lose popularity. He's going to gain it. But if Carter is the type of man that if he thought that he was going to lose the election, he would take this country by force. And if you don't think a president of the United States can do it, you better do some research. He can overnight by picking up the telephone. He can place us in martial law and suspend everything. He'll do it because uh, it's going to be the time. But, oh, okay. All right. I agree with you. Get on our hands and knees right now and start praying. Yeah. I pretty the thing. They need some prayer. You know, I, some, some re I hate the way Christians pray today. Uh, now I lay me down to sleep type prayer, you know. Uh, five seconds and you've done your duty for the day. I don't know wh what it is. Uh, I guess it's my habit in the occult. I had to spend hours meditating and reading every day. So why can't I do it for the Lord? You know, I mean, the Christian churches wonder why the witches are walking all over them. Because the witch's prayer life is stronger than the Christian's prayer life. Way back here in the back. Yeah. Well, uh, I try to leave it alone because the man who, see, I'm kind of at fault at this. The man who led him to the Lord was bribed out. He denies all this now. Uh, one of the checks plus a huge parcel of about 150 acres of land in Delaware, Ohio, I arranged as a bribe for him when I was in control. So I kind of leave it alone. I mentioned it because I didn't want people to get any hope of the Kennedy assassination being solved in Congress, you know. But um, anyway, the... Uh, he, he was led to the Lord in Ebor City, which is a Cuban refugee city within Tampa, by the help of the mayor who had just been converted to Christianity and this minister who is now probably one of the biggest witches within Christianity, bought and paid for, named Leroy Jenkins. But back at this time, he wasn't. Yes? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait for the boat, you're done. Okay, speak louder. I got the thing about Salem that picked up. <laughs> He's smiling. <laughs> okay, I'll repeat all this. He'd like me to talk about Salem and the Inquisition. And also about the Masons and their contact with the occult. I would love to. I think we'll finish. That, that'll take the rest of the evening. Uh, for one, okay, how many have read history or were taught history on the Salem Witch Pass in school? Sorry, I'm going to disappoint you. No witches were killed. Christians were. The witches did the execution. And if you want to spend a few thousand dollars in about a month like my wife and I did, go to the Essex Museum in Salem. And if you can, trick your way into the library like we did, which you're not supposed to be able to, and look at the original manuscripts you'll find out that the Collinses and the Putnams and others that were there were involved in the witchcraft, and the main charge, which never comes out in any of our history books, was that the people that were executed, were all from another town, were holding Bible studies in their homes, teaching born-again experience, and also discussing the book of Revelations, which was outlawed. But that didn't come out in our history book, but that was some of the main charges. The next thing that went on, the Inquisition, was none of the big witches were ever killed. Most of the people that were killed weren't witches. But the witches sure used it against them, just like Salem. Now, they know that in Salem no witches were killed, but they use it against Christians. They also know in the Inquisition that most of the witches did the executions there, but they use it against them. The bad point is that, and I, I want to give this to you in case this is ever thrown at you, they used John Wesley against us. Because before his salvation, he was a paid-for witch hunter in England who was responsible for thousands of people's deaths in England. But that was before his salvation, and they neglect to bring that up because they don't believe in salvation. Now, the good one, the Mason. <laughs> Four years now, I've been talking to Jack Chick that the Masons were initiated just like witchcraft people. And just, you know, I guess it never really sunk through his head that it was, so I got the blackboard out the other day, and I drew him and told him, word for word, step for step, the initiation into witchcraft of the first level, when you join the Covenant for the first time. Okay? He told him, well, that's what the Masons do. I said, that's what I've been trying to tell you. The power of secrecy, I had Masons deny that there was a knife pointed at them, 
when they were led by the summoner to the challenger at the circle to be initiated. But the knife is there, just as it is in witchcraft. They are blindfolded, they are bound, just like in witchcraft. They are led by the summoner to the challenger to a circle with a star, five points in it. With the altar, they're led through the gate at the same point and exit the circle at the other point, and it's called, and they're being reborn. The only three points that are different is, we receive a new name to sprinkle of baptism, a completely new name when we're initiated in the witchcraft. We drop our robes so that we're new when we walk in the circle and we're re robed because we're born again in the circle. That's been changed now because of the modernists and they robed the whole time, just like the Masons. The other is our wrist is cut, but they're doing away with that in witchcraft now. So the only difference between it now and the Masons is the sprinkle of baptism and given a new name. The initiation, word for word. From the time you walk up to the circle to the time you leave, action for action is the same as that that I took, my wife took, or anybody else took when he first joined witchcraft. It's what a mason does when he joins. Now you tell me that the masons are Christian. The masons were formed as a Calvinistic organization going undercover to protect themselves from persecution of witchcraft when witches were being persecuted. And that's how they were formed, and that's their right. Alistair Crowley, which is some of you may know about, some of you may not, left the Golden Dawn, which is the private coven of the Rothschilds, and formed his own group. He, got, he didn't drop all the Illuminati, but he almost got himself killed because he published two books called The Order of the Golden Dawn. They didn't mind any of it, except he drew the temples of the Rothschild's personal covenant. He drew all the banners on the wall where the order was set up, but the people were caught everything. And it just so happened there was a book out on Mormonism at the same time that had Masonism that had the very same picture in of a Mason temple. That's my statement on Masonry. Yeah. Almost all of you are finance, double mind control, alpha mind control, a lot of the different leagues, the literary groups that are involved in it. Besides, meditation will lead you, if you go on into particularly yoga, to transcendental meditation or projection and other things. The problem with the meditation groups is they give you half truths in the beginning, just like in witchcraft. And then as you go deeper and deeper, all of a sudden there's things they, did, they told you they didn't do in the beginning that they're now teaching you, if you stay with it far enough. And I personally believe that one of the best ways to fill yourself up with demons is to go into meditation groups. Okay, we're, we're running late. I'm okay. All right, we'll have Johnny Todd back again, the Lord willing. In about three months, we want you to pray for him on his Eastern tour. And this time we're going to have the ushers come forward and receive a special love offering, Brother Johnny Todd. I know that <coughs> Johnny Todd at this time is...